Happy Memorial Day weekend. It's coming up. Happy Memorial Day weekend coming up. I'm sure you have big plans. Everybody's going to Art's house. And speaking of big plans, Bob Condota, Seattle Times, why don't you get us started? Okay, thanks. Um, well, hey, Pete, can you, can you tell us, I guess, you know, we've heard a lot of different things about who's all out there, who you have all out there, and what you guys are doing right now? Yeah, we've got um, oh, just under 40 guys, now 35 guys or something like that that are working here. The guys that are, have come in this time of year from the rookie class primarily, and we're catching those guys up so that when we get to – get to camp those guys can can hold their own um there's we have guys working out all over the country and we guys here working out locally uh that are doing their stuff but these are the guys that are getting the, the work on the field right now we meet uh four days a week uh virtually and uh with our team and we're making terrific progress and things are moving along jen what have you seen from the rookies from the last time that they were on the field just a few weeks ago. Are they picking it up the way you anticipated? Yeah, yeah I think you'd be surprised how sharp they are and, and, and how far along they've already come. I mean, I've made the comment to them again today as, as we broke for the weekend that uh, they're working really hard. They're really diligent about it. Um, it matters to these guys, obviously, because they're putting in the time and they're they're able to bring it from the meeting room you know, to the field. So. Uh, we're making good progress, and so they'll be, like I said, they're going to be caught up when we, we come together. Um, I told the, the, the team that in our Zoom meeting today that they're going to be surprised how far along these guys have come, so that's uh, a good group. Joe? Hey, Pete, I, I was just curious, is it concerning at all to you that your three division rivals have pretty much their entire rosters here working out, you guys are doing the virtual thing, um, how do you kind of manage what you're seeing elsewhere around the league and then what's happening in your building yeah i don't i don't manage anything what's going on around the rest of the league um we're just doing what, what what's best for us and what, what our guys need to do and uh we're you know like i've told you we're making terrific progress we've been here before um with, with what we can get done in virtual and, and it's it's again it's going great and uh, our guys are, are dedicated and are working their, their butts off everywhere, all over the place. And we don't have that many guys living in the area, so it's a little bit more of a, of a challenge to get guys in here early in, in the off season. Um, but other than that, you know, whatever they're doing, they're doing. I don't know, you know, what their workload's like, or I don't know what their mentality is like in other places. I, I, I wouldn't know that. There's nothing that bothers you about your guys and the decision they made to say, hey, we're not going to come be a part of, of what's no, I happening. No, su I support these guys. I support what, the decision that we've made. Greg Bell, Tacoma News Tribune. Hi, Pete. Uh, is, I'm assuming Russell Wilson's not there, and I'm assuming that Geno Smith's not there. So what quarterback do you have, and, and what progress are you making in depth from that front? Yeah, really, we got a couple guys in here that are doing a nice job. Uh, Alex Magoo's done a, a really nice job and uh, fired up that he's doing it. Danny's doing his job, too. These are the guys that we've had in the past. Uh, Danny had a good good year with us last year, and, and, and uh, those two guys are competing like crazy, so they're battling. And um, I know Russ and Gino, those guys are working out hard, working out with our players when they get their chances to do that. Uh, Russ has had a number of uh, guys come visit and work, work out down where he is in, in San Diego. And uh, so... Um, the the quarterback position for us is it's it's uh, it's very competitive. This is a really cool time for these guys learning the the offense, uh, learning Shane, um, you know, and, and picking up on the stuff that we've done that, that we've adapted, and uh, it's 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 a fun challenge for these guys, and they're, they're taking it to heart. Is this Pete? Is this almost in a in a weird way a good year to be on Zoom to get into the eaches of a new system rather than? Practicing it and putting it to use right away. I, I don't know that it's that it's any better, um, but I, I do know that we have found a rhythm in our Zoom meetings and, and in the the communication that we've done. That I, if you remember last year, I was really I, I was. I was concerned because I didn't know what the result would be until we saw what the result was. And, and we thought we made more progress that way last year than we had uh, in, in years past. And so I'm counting on that again. And uh, so I don't know that it's better. I, I wouldn't think that, but um, but I know it's it's a good way to go, and it really does um, accentuate the communication part of it. And 
Um, and that interaction has, has really worked out well. You'd be surprised at how, how live it feels to guys when they're going through their sequences and they're going through all of uh, uh, the situations that we put them in um, and all of the communications that they have to make. Everybody's really held accountable for, uh, for it. Our guys uh, are, are giving their own presentations uh, kind of weekly for different aspects of, of the installation. So they're called on to have to prepare to do that as units. And so uh, all in all, the, the coaches have made it very creative and, and uh, very interactive. And, and you know, the reaction and the response has been great. So when you say your guy, you mean players or the coaches? The, no, the, the, the players the players are called on to do that as well as the coaches and uh, it's that you'd be surprised at the lengths they go to to uh, to win the competitions that they're up against and and uh, been some 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 pretty uh, well choreographed uh, presentations Corbin hey Pete you guys recently signed Nick Gugamos and you had a chance to coach his father with the Vikings uh, back in the late 80s so I guess my first question for you, what do you remember from your time coaching Neil in Minnesota and um, what stood out about Nick to have him sign? He hasn't played football since 2018. Yeah. Um, going back to Neil. Uh, uh, yeah. He, I remember him clearly, you know, where we had workouts and, and then we got a chance to sign him and put him, put him out there and, and he, he held his own. He's a really good athlete. He ran really well. Um, real bright kid. And, uh, kid I and mean, he's an old man now but uh he was a kid at the time um small small college guy that came in with you know with a chip on his shoulder wanted to prove something and, and did a nice job and spent a couple of years with us um to to get uh, his son nick out here you know i i, I just kind of guessed that how many gugamoses can there be and uh and sure enough you know uh, pops you know was was back with the vikes in the day um, but uh, he's done a nice job. He did a nice job in a couple of workouts that, that uh, our scouts had seen. And then when we brought him in here for a workout, he really did well. And so um, we thought he deserved a chance to be, be part of this. And, and uh, very competitive position for us. And he's done a nice job. He has not played a lot of football. Matter of fact, we showed some, uh, uh, some highlights of him. And, and we, the highlights we had were from practice. Um, so uh, that, that's what we, we pulled out of his college days. So, um, so it's, it's an interesting story. Johnny Boyle. Oh, we've got a Johnny now, huh? Johnny. Um, What's up, Johnny? Pete, Pete what do you, Deshaun what, what Shedd do you was got a for us, Johnny? Sorry. Deshaun Shedd was a player you've always spoke really highly of when he was here playing for you. What made you want to bring him in as a coach, and what does he bring to your staff? Well, uh, we stayed we've stayed in contact, you know, for uh, a couple of years here, and, and uh, he's always been one of our favorite guys because he's just one of the – the most true blue guys we've ever seen in the program, hardworking, dedicated, smart, uh, creative, tough. I mean, he, he had all of the elements that, you know, that were, that we love in the program, big chip on his shoulder, had to always prove it, you know, and, and, uh, so, um, you know, we just kept in contact and I talked to him a few years back, you know, that, you know, if you're ever thinking about, you know, let's, let's talk, you know, and, you know, the, there'll be a conversation waiting for you. And he went into the, uh, I think computer sales, um, business and, and just kicked butt and it became one of the top sales persons in his organization in a couple, in, I don't know, 18 months or something like that, which then, then when I hear that story, I go, well, of course, you know, that's, that's what Shed would do, you know, and, and uh, so as we talked about it and, and as this season was approaching, we talked last year about the upcoming this year and, uh, and so we just stayed with it and we, we brought into this program uh, just a, an extraordinary competitor, um, a guy with character and integrity and toughness and smarts and all that and I mean you can't you can't get enough guys like that around the program um he, he interestingly he's carried over our football and he's in he, he has retained it and maintains a, a really good command of what we've what we did and the techniques of the of the cornerback position in particular as well as the safety spot you know he played all over for us big time special teams player for us so he just has a lot to offer a lot of guys can play and they don't take that stuff with them you know he did and uh, he's he's very sharp and and uh, so um, I, I expect really big things from him I think he's going to do a great job th immediately but uh, down the road um, we're going to see Deshaun Shedd do some great stuff he, he's really talented you've had a few coach players try and make that transition over the years is, is that something you you kind of identify in players early on you have conversation it was just kind of how does that process usually go? Yeah, it depends. You know, it, it, Johnny, it depends which which guys, what situations. But 
you know, I, I when I have a sense for a guy that might really like it, might be one of those guys that's kind of a blood in the guts guys, and one, you know, just loves the game and all that. I mean, I'll drop it on him, you know, and say, you ever think about coaching, you know, and and just to to kind of set the seed in 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 the soil there, and and then if if they bite on it, then then I'll talk to them differently, you know, during the time that they're with us, I'll share stuff with them different than I would other players because they care and they they want to hear it, and you know, and I'll share a decision making situation or a you know, an issue that we're, you know, maybe faced with that might be of benefit to a guy so just to kind of keep the conversation going. And I'm just nurturing the thought, you know, and, and uh, so um, I don't do that as well as I like to, but I, I do that. And that's that's it's part to kind of keep them connected with it. This is a great game and there's a there's a great opportunity for guys. And we need people that, that can, you know, have a great sense for the game and also connect all, all of the right dots and and, uh, and and do the teaching that's necessary. And uh, so. I'm trying to help him along the way. Michael Sean. Hey Pete, what attracted you to Akella Witherspoon in free agency? Um, well, we've seen him play, you know, over the years in the last couple of years at the Niners and and uh we've seen the style of play um that that he brings. Um, you know, he's he's got he's got the makeup, speed, size length the kind of stuff that we like in, in, in our guys and uh, so we've always I've had my eye on him since we first saw him coming out of Colorado and uh, and so you know he, he just he's available and we you know we had the opportunity and so we, we pursued it but um, his mentality uh, his uh, his awareness um, he's he's still a very young player you know he's almost like a rook to me coming in He's not, but it feels like that a bit, and we're going to teach him my first time in the program, you know, just take him right back to the basics. And he's been really uh, uh, available to us. He's been here every day working out and, and, and preparing and getting ready and all of that. He's on the field with us almost every day. And uh, so he's doing a good job in all those, and he's really bright. And uh, so all of that, and, um, you know, he got he had some really good recommendations, you know, from coaches that had worked against him and, and all that as well and that had worked with him. So um, everything just led to it's a good opportunity for him. Is he the only veteran DB there now? Uh, yes. Oh, thanks. Big Art? Um, Pete, uh, the NFL offered some good news uh, over the uh, – on Wednesday about vaccination rates. Um, you guys were among those that are uh, – the 30 clubs that are above 85%. What um, – how close are you guys to complete – a hundred percent as far as you know and um, did you have to close any deals on persuading uh, players of the virtue outside of the team zoom meetings um, I, I have, have been uh, in the conversation since the, you know the whole vaccination thing got underway with our players trying to educate them and, and introduce them to ways of looking at stuff uh, and, and, and perspectives for the guys that, that are in question that had questions um, I, I don't know what our, our numbers are right, right now but uh, you know I made a pitch again today to our guys so they, they're aware that uh, the time frame that's left in the summertime before camp starts we'd like to get ideally we'd like everybody to be vaccinated before we, we report to camp um, to just to make it as safe as possible for everyone um, but um, yeah there yeah I have had some <laughs> I've had some conversations with guys. You know, uh, we brought in uh, Vin Gupta, came in and, and, and talked to our guys uh, about it and, and gave a real big pitch. And, and uh, we've had some uh, some opportunities for the families also to get vaccinated just, just to keep the message alive and, and, and keep it moving. And, and so um, we got a ways to go here. But, um, you know, our goal is to get everybody vaccinated before, before we start them up. Do you think that's going to have a uh, – if anybody remains unvaccinated, uh, is that going to be a – uh, a matter of personnel decision making about how to deal with that individual. Everybody, everybody else is free of masks and the protocols that have been a part of things for the last year. I'm not sure where you're going, but um, no, it's not going to have anything to do with, with personnel decisions. Uh, um, this is an individual's decision to make. Uh, there's a there's a team opportunity, you know, to to, to sometimes, you know, it takes other uh, elements to 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 you know to motivate you to do things and in this case you know we would like guys to do it for everybody around them as well as the, themselves as well as their family as we've been talking for a, a long while um, but it's not going to it's not going to determine a guy's you know making and not making the football team um, but it will it, it it does as we are all those of us that that can you know 
use the experience, it, it does change your mentality. And it does adjust how, how you're thinking, and there's a freedom to it that, that um, is refreshing, and, and there's, a, uh, there's a sense of confidence about it that, that is, you know, kind of just supports your, your, your work and your interaction with the guys around you. Uh, but um, so you know, we'll, we'll do the best we can, and it's important that we, that we get it done for, in, in all directions. Nico. Uh, thank you. Hey there, Pete. Hey. Uh, I was uh, wondering, with you know, such big pieces from your cornerbacks that uh, departed uh, from last season, uh, how much more pressure does that put on a rookie uh, like Trey Brown uh, to just kind of get the defense real quick? And what would you need to see out of a rookie like him to be a starter, a good starter for this team? Yeah, the I don't know. If if he feels the pressure of it, that other than he's trying to make this team, and he didn't come here to to back up, he's come here to play, and so uh, um, he's up against it as all the young guys are to catch up, to get comfortable, uh, to to get them themselves to the point where they can operate in a player's mind, where they can play freed up and and confident and, and sure uh, of what they're doing and what's expected of them, and we can count on them. All of that has to happen, um, and and so uh, this he's a hard working kid. He's got a, a He's got a good, good mind for you know for battling and competing, and he's after it. Um, so what he has to do, he's got to show well in camp, and he's got to show well in the preseason games, you know, to to see if he get to be a starter. Um, he'll get a chance. We're going to take a look at him. We won't see him, and uh, we want to make sure that we can get a good evaluation of him. So, um, but he's he's got a lot of elements that he's uh, again. I, you hear me constantly coming back to the chip on the shoulder. Uh, he he's one of those guys, you know. He's got a mentality about it, and he's tough, and he, and he wants to prove it, and and. Uh, so that's that's getting you going in the right direction, and so we'll see how how he battles. Tim, Pete, some teams around the league have sort of negotiated the off-season workouts with their players. Some are obviously like you guys doing virtual OTA. Some are um, some are doing away with mini camp. Do you still intend to have your veteran mini camp in, in June? Do you expect your veterans? To show up, and what was, what were those conversations like with your veteran players, and in, in sort of determining what the off-season schedule would look like? Yeah, our activities gonna pick up as we get closer to minicamp. We expect a pretty darn good uh, attendance in minicamp. There's a couple guys have some special situations, but for the most part, we expect our guys to be there. Um, the week before is a really important week as well, um, in, in in preparation for it. So we'll see more guys coming through as we get get to that uh, uh, to the middle of June there, and so. Um, uh, so the conversations have been, you know, open. I've, I've talked to a bunch of guys. I've talked to our, our representatives. I've talked to, you know, Bobby and Russ for sure. Um, and so we're, we're, we're communicating on a good level about it. So um, it's, it hasn't been a negotiation. It's been a conversation about it. And uh, we're kind of partnering in this thing to, to put it together so we can get what we need to get done. Uh, right now, what we're doing is we're preparing to get ready for camp. That's what this is, you know, and, and it's a voluntary time for us to take advantage of our opportunities. And I, I love the way our guys are learning. Uh, I, I know I know where they're going to be mentally um, based on what we did last year you know, without any offseason work. And so anything that we get done here will be a bonus to that. And, uh, we'll, we, you know, we're going to we plan to do this really well. Maz Vida. Hey, Pete, just wondering if you could talk about the running backs that are there, like who's there and what have you seen from them? Yeah. Um, well, Josh Johnson has, has done a nice job. Uh, uh, Travis Homer's been in for some time. Has not been working a lot on the field, but he's been in. Uh, DJ Dallas is here with us. Um, who's our other kid? Oh, yeah, yeah. B.J. Emmons is, is, is here. He's, he's banged up a little bit, not doing too much work. Uh, but those guys are doing a nice job. And, uh, you know, they're, they're learning. There's 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 very little of of this that you can evaluate a running back on other than you know doing things right assignments right and catching the football and and our guys are all fitting in well in, in that regard thank you curtis yeah pete i know it's still early working through the new offense and such but from your little bit of time doing so and working with shane what do you think is going to be the biggest change and shift for your guys to have to come along and, and learn and adjust to in, in the new kind of vision yeah, you see. Well, there's there's a um, there's a sense of continuity to it that that Shane brings that um, that I'm really excited about because things fit together and uh, really really in a connected fashion more so than I've than I've seen us have in, in years past uh, in the design of it um, and uh, with that 
Um, Shane also brings a, a real eye and, and an intent on, on tempo and utilizing tempo in different areas, different aspects of our game, which is really is something we've always liked to, uh, to implement with Russ. And Russ is, uh, has taken to it as well uh, at this point. And so we're, we're off and moving. And so uh, I like our tempo. Um, I, I like the, the variety and the mix of how things fit together and, and continued emphasis on, on the way we mix run game and pass game and make that complement. Uh, that's, that's really the – those should be, as you see us develop over the, you know, the coming months here, you'll see that uh, show up. And there's no doubt that it will that be part of our game. And, and uh, with that, you know, we've got some really exciting players, you know, that we get to feature. Chris and, 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 uh, and Rashad back to running the football and uh, with, with Dis and, and – uh, um, Gerald Everett at, at the tight end spots and, and uh, you know, the upcoming Colby, uh, Parkinson. There's some really cool things that we can do there with those guys. And, you know, we love our receivers. And so um, we're, uh, the guy who has really made a nice first impression for us uh, um, is, is Dwayne, you know, Eskridge. He's done a nice job so far. And it looks, you know, he he's an exciting addition to uh, the competition. And so – and all that stuff, you know, Shane's take, working to take advantage of and position guys and, and situate them so that we can utilize those guys. And it seems really comfortable and natural as it's coming about. And so uh, there's a lot of stuff to be excited about. The guys up front, they're, they're, uh, they're already in tune with the emphasis and how we're doing some things. I don't want to go too far into it. But uh, the way we're doing some things with them in the run in the run pass game, um, it's going really, to really help them. And they're going to be uh, – uh, they're going to be a big factor for us. I think I think we're going to just be improved in all aspects of it, and and it looks like it's uh, uh, well. You know, you got to wait and see. But um, I'm ex I'm really fired up about it. Well, he started it. Now he's going to finish it. Bob Condota. Bring it on home, Bob. Um, hey, Bobby um, Condota. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, this will be. Um, KJ Wright remains unsigned. Is is the door still open for him to return at all, or is that are you saying sort of closing the page on KJ at all, or? No, the the. The door is, is still open for players. We're still working at figuring out the, the roster and how it's going to go. Until we get on the field and can see how things are starting to come together, uh, there won't be you know, major changes in what's going on because we're, we're pretty committed at this point. That doesn't mean that we're not tuned into all of the options and the opportunities that are out there because we are. But um, you know, KJ KJ's okay at, at this point. He's doing fine. And, and if, uh, if, if we get a chance to call on him, you know, we'll, we'll go after it and we'll, we'll see if we can put something together. Okay, thank you, everyone. See you. See you. Have a good break.